The Committee of the Whole is called to order. Would you call the roll? Yes, please. Um, yes, I will. Bauman. Excused. D. Berg. Here. E. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Aye. Graf is here. Kettleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Segali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vander Wheelie? Here. Fifteen present. A quorum is present. Thank you. Item number three. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April 11, 05, May 19, 05, and May 23, 05. So moved. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor state aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Item number four. Madam Chairperson. Yes, President. Um, I would make a motion that on item four, five, six, seven, and eight, that the resolution on item number four and the communications on five and six and the R ROs seven and eight, that they be placed on file. Second. second. There's been a motion and a second to accept and place on file Number four, five, six, seven, and eight. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Motion pass. Then, um, Madam Chairperson, on items nine, 10, 11, and 12, the three communications and the one RO, I would move that those items be placed on file also. There's, there's been a motion and a second on items 9, 10, 11, 12 on the agenda to be placed on file. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. And then, uh, Madam Chairperson, uh, also on items 13, 14, 15, and 16, that those three ROs and the resolution, uh, that those four items be placed on file. Second. There has been a motion and a second to have item 13, 14, 15, 16 on our agenda placed on file. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Now we're down to what we're here for this evening. Item number 17 on the agenda, review of city development and city engineering rating scores of proposed police station building sites. I want to thank um, Tom Holton and Paulette Enders for working so hard and getting this information to us before tonight. I think that was very considerate of you, very professional. I thank you. And you have the floor. Is this one on? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, what I'd like to do is have for the benefit, I think, of the, the viewing audience is read a little bit of the, um, the cover letter that we inserted in our analysis of the 18 sites. Uh, the Committee of the Whole met on May 23rd okay. and compiled... Can you wait just a minute? Marge Seg Alderman Segali. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I see here where Paulette Enders and Tom Holton um, did this um, this proposed site evaluations. But my question is, and I would like answered before we go into any of this, if the police, uh, if the police um, were um, given an opportunity to look at these sites and to recommend what their sites would be because they are experts in this field. So I would like to have that answered before we go into the sites, please. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Um, this technical information phase, and you can see the criteria and the things that um, they looked at, that wasn't the needs assessment of the police. These were, this, this is the technical phase, but the needs assessment of the police has been gathered by Zimmerman, and I think that that will perhaps be addressed later on this evening. Does that answer your question, Alderman Sigali? No, Madam Chairman, I'm sorry. I feel that there, with the technical as well as anything else, the police should have been involved in this. They should, I mean, they should know the technical part of this. 
and I, I, I think that they should have been able to at least be a part of this, um, this process. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. I may be uh, able to clarify that a little bit. When this committee referred those 18 <coughs> potential sites to city development and city engineer, they, they were referred to them with, with some specific instructions, meaning that they should have the opportunity to look at every site and bring back information pertinent to that. The 18 sites were not referred to the police department. They were referred to city development and city engineer. But aside from all that, even now, as we speak, the police department is involved, but they're, in, they're involved in a different aspect. They're involved with some of the numbers that, uh, that involve the cost of the police station. They were working with Mr. John Sabinash on that. This is, that's just not part of what's being presented to you now, but their involvement is assured. They should be involved and they will be involved. They're just not gonna be, be involved in everything like a lot of things, a lot of other departments aren't involved in everything either. But I, I appreciate your comment that they should be involved and they are involved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Danberg. What? Thank you, Madam there. Chair. First of all, I'd like to, when these came out on Friday, first of all, I didn't know any of the site, the selections or anything. I was notified by the Sheboygan Press. They called me and asked me all questions on these sites. I said I had no knowledge of any of the sites. And then when we were gonna leave our home, we clo closed the front door, this was thrown on my front porch. And I was just wondering who, who was delivering these and why they weren't uh, handed to, to us personally because our door was wide open in the front and if anybody would have been there and knocked on the door or anything because my dog would have tore him a new something. But I don't think a document like this should have been just thrown on our steps. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, I, I guess I'd have to answer that particular uh, concern there. What I attempted to do, and if it was wrong, and I apologize, but what I attempted to do, and instead of putting it in your mailbox, I felt that it would be a better effort on my part and more respectful to you if, if that particular handout was, was taken to your home address personally. So I asked Mr. Tom Holton to get somebody to come here at a certain time so we could deliver those <coughs> personally. Now, if your interpretation is that they were thrown on the porch, that's your interpretation. But those, those uh, handouts were, were supposed to be delivered personally to you with personal attention, and that's what we attempted to do. Is that correct, Mr. Holton? Yes, it is. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I know I received mine. No one was at home. It was between our doors, which I get a lot of mail from there, but I was happy to see it. But you should have all received a copy of the, the minutes of the meeting from the, the day that it was, um, that the, um, the site selections were, were given, or the, the 17 sites or 18 sites were given, and that was distributed um, to everybody on email, I know, and that, that came out um, Friday. Fr sometime Friday, but um, it still was out before that, too, um, because there was a list done from somebody's office, because I saw a list earlier, and I know I, I put one in the minutes, as soon as I put it together, so um, that's just all I wanted to say. Thank you, Alderman Groth. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Madam Chairman. With all due respect to the mayor and to Paulette and to Tom and to you, Madam Chairman, I want to be put on record as saying I strongly object to the police department not being involved in the selection of the sites. I think it was mandatory that they should be there, and I thank you for that. Uh, these are the sites that we selected. Right. And, but, they're, and now they're, the they're being final, analyzed. But the, but the final three sites, they all should been, also should have been involved in, and they weren't. That's what we will be deciding this evening. Thank you. Oh. If I may. Yes. Alderman Graf. That's a, I was going to say this before, but I forgot. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to be developing a, a review process where these, these 18 sites 
we are going to whittle them down tonight to, to three or four or whatever we decide. And at that particular time, I'm sure the police department are going, are going to be more involved into, well, can we live with it here or what? And so that was kind of the process that we had said two weeks ago that we were going to do. We had these 18 sites. We wanted Tom and, um, and, pa and Paulette to, um, to look at these. And from there, we'd whittle it down and, and go from there. And hopefully, that'll work for everybody. Thank you, Alderman Grah. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I think in all respects, um, I think we're, we're communicating here, but um, just to help out with the police department, just courtesy to them, um, I understand that they just received this report today, and they are a critical component in this. We are building their facility, and maybe just as a teachable moment that in the, in the, you know, if, in the future that they would receive a copy of this. I think we can just leave it at that prior to the public, you know, courtesy to their department. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Thank you. And I think start off by saying that we did not choose a site. What we did was we evaluated the 18 sites and then ranked them in descending order. And really the selection is up to the Common Council. Uh, we evaluated these to the best of our ability using our professional expertise and tried to give you as much information um, as possible and we're here to answer any kind of questions. So I'll, I'll begin again, said for the benefit of the viewing public, the Committee of the Whole met on May 23rd and compiled a list of 18 possible police station sites. This list was then forwarded to the Directors of Public Works, Engineering and Planning and Development for their evaluation. It should be noted that the Sheridan Park site was not scored based on Common Council action to remove the site from consideration. City Hall, North 23rd Street, and the bus transfer station received the highest scores. And then what we did was we listed the 18 sites in descending order. It should be understood that no site received a perfect score. The city of Sheboygan is a compact and densely developed community. Given the city's lack of vacant parcels, flexibility and design should be exercised. All sites will have a variety of issues to overcome. Assumptions were made on smaller sites that multi-floor facilities would be feasible. A wide range of criteria were selected to evaluate the sites. The selected criteria were categorized into three main groups, economic, location, and geotechnical. The criteria were not weighted, and the cost of construction was not a consideration in this evaluation. A zero to three rating system was used, with zero of no value, one low value, two medium value, and three high value. And then um, what we did was, in some <coughs> situations when you get into site selection they'll just do a simple pass fail we did not do that we rated all really all but one of the 18 sites thank you thank you paulette tom holton would you like to add anything no paulette covered it all right thank you so much and i'll bet we have some questions Now, and we are working on a process for selecting the location for a new police station. So, agenda item, agenda item number 17, Paulette and Tom. Rich Gephardt, did you want to say something to us now? Rich Gephardt. Yes, please, yes. I guess I just bring to your attention what I placed on uh, the alderman's desk in reference to a summary of the estimates uh, for the police facility. And this was for uh, what uh, Mr. Savanash did uh, as an estimates for an 80,000 square foot facility, not knowing the site, uh, but giving a range of possible costs. And what this ties in to is what we discussed uh, earlier this evening in the finance committee in reference to uh, financing the police facility and also uh, with what is uh, on the horizon with state regulations of uh, the budget bill that we will be looking at uh, coming in. The Finance Committee has recommended to Council uh, an authorizing re resolution for debt issuance of uh, up to $17 million that gives the Council the authority to issue that debt, but is not any commitment to the council. 
Um, but it's based on these estimates that were placed on your desk in, in the discussion that we had this evening. So I'll just let you know that you'll be seeing that on your next council agenda. Thank you, Rich. Um, John Sabanash, would you like to tell us a little bit about option A, option B, optimistic, conservative? The, the costs that we generated were based on, and I I believe everyone's received the full spreadsheet information. Is that correct, or is it everybody looking at the distilled, distilled version? Uh, the option A and option B are based on bid projects of comparable size and uh, configuration. So we have a, a multi-story building and a single-story slab on grade building in these cost estimates. Uh, that takes into account the size of project that's roughly comparable to the size of project that we envisioned. Uh, identifies specific criteria for fleet independent of the major body of the building as a smaller unit cost to derive an estimated uh, cost of construction in $2,006. The optimistic approach would say that on bid day there would likely be a bidder who would be very aggressive and position himself to acquire the project at that level. Uh, the conservative approach would say that uh, we can't guarantee that that aggressive bidder is going to be there on bid day, so we would recommend uh, considering uh, a more conservative approach in terms of financing and funding the project, uh, ensuring that the project is viable on bid day. Uh, in addition to the hard construction costs, there were a number of different allowances that were inserted into the project not knowing the nature of the site, so some issues related to utilities and other categories of construction that might be identifiable early on in the site selection process are given as allowances in this case. So at the time that we have a more explicit site definition, it could be that those allowances would be rescinded out of the capital budget and uh, uh, not be a, a project factor cost. In addition to that, we were very methodical in identifying the other project costs that would be attributable to the project relative to security systems, uh, temporary construction criteria, and other categories that uh, uh, haven't been fully explored in depth to this point. So we took uh, the most thorough approach that we could at this level of design and the most uh, um, thorough approach relative to the building design that we could given that we know nothing about the nature of the building because we have no site. We only knew about the size of the building. So we used that comparable data to uh, gauge where we stood relative to uh, prudent budgeting for a project at this level of completion. Thank you, Mr. Sabanash. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. According to this, to this information that we give in, under site construction, can that also be translated to site preparation? Thank you. Because we know so little about the site, it would be uh, costs attributable to specific site detailing. So it would be, as an example, in the, the more conservative approach, we're expecting that we might have a slightly larger site, have more site preparation to do, more, more disturbed area that has to be covered by landscaping. So as an example there, the landscaping budget is larger given that we would expect to be dealing with more landscaping on a larger site. But in general terms, yes, it's relative to earth and excavating of the site, preparation of the site, proof rolling, and making the site uh, ready for the building to be inserted upon it. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Forgive me, I'll be asking a lot of questions tonight. Um, in reference to what Richard Gephardt had given us um, with this cost comparison, has finance capped us at any certain amount currently? In so that, and the reason I bring that up is because on this information that we have, there's no land acquisition costs, and there's also no demolition costs factored into the sheet. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you. Uh, this evening, finance uh, did make a recommendation to cap the um, project at $17 million, which includes um, land acquisition if necessary. Uh, but we also, um, left a message that we expected it to come in less than $17 million because um, the cap we put at is it can't be raised above that, but we don't have to spend the $17 million if we don't need to. So um, we are looking at something very conservative and um, we're, um, we're hoping that the, um, the police department and Zimmerman and Associates and um, this council is going to work together on coming in at something under the budget 
and um, once the rest of the process is done as far as selecting a location and so forth, um, we'll all need to work together to see if there's something that we can do um, to help come in at something less than um, $17 million because the $17 million um, will be putting us right below our borrowing cap that we have and therefore it's imperative if we want to continue our AA bond rating and so forth that we, we do what we can to stay under our cap. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Does that answer your question, Alderman Serta? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think you received um, from Alderman Graff the process for selecting location for the new police station. Step one, we've done that. That was um, Paulette Enders and Tom Holton. Step two, pick three potential locations and refer them to Zimmerman. And I think Mr. Sabanash would gladly do that for us for further evaluation with a time limit of 30 days or sooner. Zimmerman will be charged with evaluating associated costs, size of property, size of structure, functionality of structure, and potential delays. Step three, while Zimmerman is doing that, hold a public input session in evaluating the three locations that we give him to tonight. And perhaps we could meet and add and ask the public to join us at the library rather than the council chambers. I think um, I'll ask the mayor if you might be able to arrange that with the library. Thank you. Step four, that won't be tonight. Review Zimmerman's evaluation of the three sites and the public's input and vote on a site. And then do this. Any further questions? Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could you explain the reason why we'd want to hold that at the library versus the Common Council? Bigger space, friendly to the community. Okay. And it has microphone access? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Alderman Graff. If I, if I may add one thing. Um, I know that at the library it would also be more conducive to having people that um, we could have it set up so that it could be like from uh, maybe 4 until 7 on one night. Uh, because a lot of people have trouble making a 4 o'clock meeting, let's say, or even a 7 o'clock meeting because there's other things that they may want to be. But if we have a, a three-hour space, let's say, where public would be welcome to come in and, and we take comments from them during that period of time, it might give, give us more information. Um, so that was one of the reasons looking at the library. It was easy to get to and, and parking wouldn't be a problem there. And, okay. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, adding on to what Alderman Graff has brought up, why couldn't we look at a Saturday morning listening session as long as we're going to open this up and look at people who are working evenings and days and things so that we give everybody in the public a chance to come out and, and, and give their input? Because I think many times um, people are not available during the weekdays, but a Saturday morning would work out much easier for them. Good information. Thank you, Alderman Radke. And maybe that could be done both. I know a lot of our public hearings, as far as the budget goes for the um, county, let's say, we always have two, two uh, public input sessions that we, um, we listen to, um, to various people coming in and speak. We normally try to do one on a Saturday and one a little longer during the weekday, so that helps there, too. So it's good. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't know if it's possible at the library, but I would ask if it is possible, if we could have it on Channel 8, have the meetings taped. We'll check it out. Thank you. Yes. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, when it comes to these three sites, we are not limited now to the three sites that they have chosen. Am, the, am, am I correct? In you are I correct. Mean, if there is, like the four site does, Southwest Business and Broadway, if we, do, if we look at that one, that could be one of the three. We don't have to be limited to the three that they have so chosen right now, am I correct? They have told us which are the three top sites with their technical information, but they, they are not deciding. We are deciding. OK. Thank you, Alderman Sagali. Alderman Graff. Yeah, um, question, um, since that's what we're supposed to do. Um, I know one of the things that I've heard um, several times is that the um, North 23rd Street? The North 23rd Street site is is uh, very much polluted, and there's 
um, a lot of additional costs that may be associated with that. Um, Tom, can you answer that question? Because I know we did some soil borings there and so forth. And um, I'd like it directly from you. Is, is that a problem or is that something that um, we shouldn't be as concerned about? I don't believe it's a problem. We, we went out with a city back and we dug four test pits down to uh, virgin soil. Uh, it varied from maybe three to four feet to eight or nine feet of fill. It was just a, maybe a few bricks and some asphalt, but we had it checked for any petroleum. We didn't find anything. Uh, I think it's a buildable site. I mean, it's nothing that's not manageable. And I have one other question um, regarding are any of these sites too small <laughs> or are, and it would not be practical to, to even consider? Well, some that come to mind, as Paulette mentioned, that we originally looked at just throwing some of the sites out because of that, but decided for criticism not to do it, that we would rate all of them and let the cards fall where they may. But uh, uh, up on 9th and St. Clair, that site was only a few thousand square feet. Uh, 8th and Niagara, like that site was maybe 6,000 square feet, I believe. And there's some other sites, I think, that are just too odd size, long and narrow, like the Green Warehouse or the Rockline Warehouse. It's just they're long, narrow sites. I don't think that would be uh, conducive to a, a functional facility, in my opinion. Thank you. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, along the same lines, how do you feel about City Hall? Because the acreage there is coming in far below some of these other sites you mentioned. What's but your I, perspective there? As, as we said in the narrative here, that you know, some multi-floor facilities may be, have to be looked at. And again, we're not knowing the functionality of them, but I think you could look at vacating the alley, maybe even going in the parking lot to make the site bigger if need be. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's, there's reports out that the city has gotten and the county has gotten that that land is polluted on North 23rd. But basically, if we decide to go North 23rd and we're not happy with the contract or we're not happy if they say, well, we're not going to pay cleanup costs, well, then we'll just drop it. You know, unfortunately, we'll have to get to that point, but that's where we're going to have to go. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Serda. Oh, sorry. Alderman Danberg. <coughs> got to remember the 23rd Street site also, the appraisal price, they, were, they wanted us to put 300000 in escrow that they could use our money for their use of share, uh, sharing services with us. Plus, they want that parking lot on Penn Avenue, which is very, very valuable piece of land. If the city would have to give up that parking space and go purchase land someplace else and have demolition of homes, relocation of people, you're talking close to a million dollars alone right there. And they would have to be liable for all environmental cleanup because it is their property and it's their problem. So they would have to 100% clean up of the property. Um, Tom Holton, there would be no cleanup. Well, no, I think there is some petroleum back by the salt that I believe that's been uh, spilled back there at some point. And how much cleanup does that involve? I couldn't tell you. I don't know what the extent of the contamination is. No. But I know the drift, I think, is to the north, northeast, where an old swale that used to go through there. Okay. Thank you. And, and on the 23rd Street, if I'd add, though, there's other issues that materials that was placed in there probably was not compacted. So you'd have to do something with the building design for a floating slab or something like that, which would be some additional cost. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Um, regarding the, 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 the parking lot, that was one of the things that they asked for, but that doesn't mean that we can't substitute that with, for instance, the, um, the armory parking lot is just as close as the, the one that you're talking about, and that's already rented out, that other parking Our, lot. Yeah, ours is 48 out of the 51 or at least but you talk to some of the supervisors, they say their people are too lazy to walk from the uh, armory parking lot. So what do you? Well, I'm just saying that there I are know. other options available, and I don't think that is a, um, an issue that um, is really, it's just, they need additional parking places at the, at the county. It's available. One of them 
one of the ways to get there. And like I said, the, um, the armory parking lot is as close as the one on um, 7th Street. Yes, yes. So. Thank you, Alderman Bird. James. Go ahead, Paulette. Um, what I just wanted to mention was on the North 23rd Street site, what we did was we put in the appraisal that the, the latest information that we had kind of excluded any other deal that was discussed, and we just used the appraisal like the other sites. We didn't have a, uh, a fair market value from the assessor's office because the piece is tax exempt, but we used that current appraisal. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I was looking at the South Business Drive and Broadway Avenue, and as Tom and I had talked about this about two months ago. Um, with that particular piece of property, how would that be affected by the existing rail line, which is still active running through there, or could we work something out with the railroad on that? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if you could or not. Um, the, the railroad line that runs between Pennsylvania Avenue and Merton Avenue, it's not used. Uh, we tried to acquire it some time ago for an uh, uh, interurban bike trail, but the only way they'd be able to do it, they'd sell it for a buck a square foot, but it'd go to the Rail to Trails program. So if they ever wanted rail back in there, they'd kick us out and we'd lose our investment. And uh, I don't think, we tried to get that line abandoned twice when we were doing South Business Drive. It ended up costing us probably half a million dollars extra on retaining walls through there. And we could not, we just ran into dead ends. We had the state try to help us out and we could not get that thing vacated. So. Oh. How would that affect the building being right next to the rail line we built there? Well, if they ever open it back up. Well, there's, there are other issues with that site. I don't know, I can't say for sure what that rail line does, other than it's probably, you know, 60 more feet, 66 feet of land that you could use. And uh, I think it's been probably three years since a train's gone through there. And, and actually, we took the crossing out at Broadway. The crossing's not even in there right now. So. Yeah. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to uh, state that by working with the railroad the last three or four years, it's nearly impossible. You're dealing with basically people in Washington and it just trickles down. So it's almost impossible and I don't think we'd ever make a deal. And by building next to the railroad, we're landlocked because we're not gonna be able to go past the railroad. So I just wanted to state that. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to actually present this question to Mr. Sabanash because he is an architect. And it, we were conservative, as you can look at this map. Um, we are at least, what, 10 feet or so from that railroad. And if he's ever worked around a railroad, if that is feasible to be so close. Thank you. I think I've worked on every site imaginable okay. now. Uh, I would agree with any sentiment that would um, identify that the railway is a very difficult organization to work through and acquisition would be measured in years, not months. Um, if it's an active rail line, there are, certain, um, there are certain issues related to the security of the facility given that it's an active rail line. If there's a, a hazardous spill somewhere proximate to that rail line as a function of its active use. That's a problem with putting a, a major uh, municipal facility proximate to it. But there are certainly examples of facilities that are proximate to rail lines. Um, I would just add that if the, the site in question has uh, additional setbacks and other criteria with it that just impacts the building design, you'd find out in a hurry whether it was a viable site when you took a look at it in depth. The railway doesn't light people next to it. It generally avoids that whenever it can. Thank you, Mr. Sabanash. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this particular time, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that um, the three sites that, that we're, we should be presenting uh, for for our choice of, of um, the new police facility would be uh, the City Hall site, the North 23rd site, and the, um, the former drop-off site. Drop-off site. And uh, the reason I, I did not select the bus transfer station right across the street is because we would end up paying back to the feds any undepreciable amount of money, I believe it is, that, um, that they gave us 
um, and they paid about 80, I think they paid 80% for that transfer per station, so we'd have to pay them back uh, for that particular thing unless we could have them, um, um, oh, I forgot what it called, um, but it's, uh, they would give it up freely, and I don't know if, if they're willing to do that or not. I know we worked a long time for the senior center to be given uh, to the city. Um, so, and then uh, the Southwest business slash Broadway site, um, for some of the reasons that were just brought up, uh, I eliminated that. So I would move that those three, City Hall, North 23rd Street, and the former <coughs> drop-off site be the three sites that we recommend. We have a motion on the floor that we consider City Hall, North 23rd Street, and the former drop-off site. Tom Holton, I think you wanted to say something. No. About the bus transfer station? Nope, guess not. All right. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Madam Chair. Question about South Business and Broadway. Uh, looking at the site with the configuration, it's, it's an uneven piece of property. I presume if we went that direction, we would actually need to buy the adjacent property, which I believe is the Channel TV site. Is that correct? I would agree with that. It's a, as it stands by itself, it's a very odd shape. Would that be in addition with the uh, property adjacent to that another acre and a quarter? How much? I, I would say probably an acre and a half, just guessing. Maybe close. I'd say an acre and a half to acre and three quarters, acre in that area. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Alderman Danberg. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. We're looking at money, 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 you know. Why are we keeping one in there that's going to cost us a lot of money, such as the 23rd Street site? This, I mean, I think uh, the county people had too much say in this uh, this whole thing, and this is, like I said, this is a Sheboygan PD. Let's use the land that we've, we've chosen here and do away with that uh, 23rd Street site because it's gonna be nothing but a headache. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Berg. Alderman Eldenburg. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, question uh, on the Zimmerman design. We have uh, 2,000, uh, 2,134,000 to 2,290,000 for fleet components. And I assume that has to do with, uh, if you would, uh, the, uh, maintaining the, the police department fleet. Uh, were we to look at siting it at the former drop-off site, uh, I guess I would ask Tom, what would be the expandability of uh, putting some of the service bays in the municipal service building uh, versus new construction and also, uh, regarding that site, uh, the degree of fill we'd need to get it above floodplain, and your sense of the future of expanding the municipal service complex, uh, not now, but 30 or 40 years down the line, given that would allow us to have a, a rather large campus, if you would, that would uh, provide all municipal services. Uh, to answer the first question, is there's an area in the mechanics shop where we store tires and parts that could be re relocated elsewhere so you could probably get a couple of bays in there for uh, smaller vehicles like a, uh, a car. Uh, out on the, on the uh, uh, 19th Street site, the drop-off site, fill would be needed uh, where that the warehouse is, I believe Alpine has that. That parking lot is probably below a uh, floodplain. And I would suspect you probably have to bring it up about three feet uh, plus to bring that out. Uh, and as far as expansion, as part of the comp plan, uh, it shows that we should be purchasing homes uh, west of the service building as they come up for sale. I believe there's about four left. We had been doing that, uh, but nothing's come up for sale as of us went by today and there's one for sale now, I noticed, a yellow one that's just right next to our driveway. Mm -hmm. so there's possibilities for expansion down there okay. as we purchase uh, more property. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burke. Alderman Davis. Uh, Madam Chair, considering the uh, conversation that we've had here, why don't we break this question down into three parts and, and uh, roll call vote on each portion of the, of the question. Thank you, Alderman Davis. We do have a motion on the floor in a second, so I think we'll, Alderman, go out. I just wanted to, in, in reply to Alderman Danberg uh, regarding the 23rd Street site, 
And, you know, the previous council did some negotiating with, with, the, um, with the county on that site, but this council has not done any negotiating with them, and things could have changed. And just like you, you bring up the fact that that's going to cost a lot of money, well, the, the dollar amount that I heard that they were looking for was a, a, approximately $300,000 set in an escrow account that would be used for shared services. That's the only dollar amount that I heard. And several times I've heard several people say, it's a million dollars for this, and, and this is going to cost us so much, and this is going to cost us so much. And I think if this one is one of the sites that, that stays, that um, one of the first things that we have to do is, is we have to go to step two, and then we have to begin negotiating with these entities to see what we have to do and what we can get. Thank you, Alderman Brown. <clears throat> Alderman Dan Burke. <coughs> I was in on those negotiations. There was, I wish I would have been. So. There was 300000 in the escrow. They wanted 150000 for the salt shed. And then they wanted that parking lot. Now, the, the, the value of that parking lot was, ex, I don't know what it was at the time, but to replace it, we have to have parking down here for our business people. Like I said, there's 51 parking stalls there, 48 are leased. Where are those people going to go if we give that up? And I'm not saying giving like, that up. That's what, I'm, that's what the county wanted. And that's what I'm talking about, the negotiations I was in when we were talking with them. That's the figures that I had. And that's what the, I've heard all along yet. Now they'll come and go, oh, well, we'll do this and we'll do that. I just don't, I don't even like it. Thank you, Alderman Bird. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Madam Chair. For me, the motion was just too quick. I thought we would be generating more discussion tonight. For instance, um, let's face it, we're not professionals in the sense of being an architect, having the background, professional background as Paulette and Tom. However, I'm wondering if we should have submitted this to Mr. Sabinash because here's, we could take what we know now, limit it to three sites, but there could have been a potential site for us if we didn't have the experience from the architect. Could you see where that, that could be a missing link here? So I have some reservations there. For instance, here's a simple question that I would like Mr. Sabinash to answer is, what do we foresee? And I know I've had the opportunity to meet with Paula and Tom today, and I'm glad that I did because I thought these questions would be answered today. Um, but when they looked as far as the report and you had to make a determination on expansion, um, you know, it's funny how some of these sites come out as being the top sites, but yet we're limiting ourselves by, for instance, City Hall. We're boxing ourselves in. There was all this in the beginning about, you know, future expansion. You have to think outside the box. But here, that's one of our top sites. We need to look reasonably. What is our need as far as expansion? And again, I think we should ask the Chief of Police. He knows his department well. And again, I would direct that question to Mr. Sabinash. How does he foresee a department our size, given the city's dynamics and the potential growth? Mr. Sabinash. Uh, there was a certain amount of growth already programmed. So uh, I think that even if you uh, inquired with the chief what percentage of the building, I'm not sure we'd be able to tell you that, but there was a certain amount of growth given that this was a 20-year projected building inherent in the program statement that we generated. In terms of shared services or like facilities at this site, um, uh, one would generally take the approach that I think we, we discussed uh, during the, the previous meetings, that you would try to identify the spaces that were most likely to be shared. In this case, largely the training facilities. Um, briefing rooms, report writing areas, and you try to get them positioned strategically so that they were proximate to an outside wall that would allow interface between two agencies or expansion of an agency adjacent to it within the department itself, a bureau, let's say. Um, in terms of the site evaluation, we would just take a, an estimate of what we would think to be a normal growth rate if we have program reductions as part of the budgeting process and we try to identify where we try to re place those program spaces in the future, and you would just try to establish where you would logically expand the building in the future as part of that site criteria. But we haven't looked at the site, so we don't know whether one is more restrictive than another. Thank you, Mr. Sabinash. 
Um, Alderman Serda, I think that future expansion is part of the criteria that Paulette and Tom took into consideration. It, it's listed with all of the sites. And then what we also did was somewhat related to what Mr. Sabinash was stating is we did also look at shared services, not only from a, let's say, a county perspective, but from a city perspective with our own, in, you know, with the internally as well as externally. Thank you, Paula. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm having trouble realizing how the city hall site is possibly big enough. Um, tell me more, would this building be maintained as city hall and redone eventually? And would the police station be adjacent to the north? Would this site come down totally and build up from the ground? I just can't see how it would work in this space. Well, we kind of look at this based on a, a previous study that the city hall would stay intact and the expansion would be to the north. And again, it was, it was assumed that a multi-floor uh, facility would work. You know, we, we, Looked at, I think it was 23 criteria, 22 or 23 criteria, and uh, City Hall has scored high in a lot of them just because it's a, it's already owned by the city. Uh, there's not a, any acquisition costs. There's not a lot of demolition costs, but it's expansion. It scored low. It scored to one. So it's, it's possible it might be some expansion, whether you design the building to add additional floor later, or if you look at going into the parking lots to the north in the future. But it, but. It, it, but just making assumptions that there would be room to go to the north and up. How about parking? F for which? For Wait, the please, squads? Or, uh, that's up, something that, that would be Zerman would have to look at that. You could do something uh, underground parking yet or first floor parking, similar to what's out there now, or larger. But. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairperson. I guess my question right now really is how big of a new police, new police station do we really need? Senate Bill 118 is lurking around the Senate floor, and one of these days it's going to come to a vote. When they put that to Assembly Bill 79, that clears the way for us to start working with the county and possibly contracting some services or all the services the police department now handles over to the county. So I guess really what it's coming down to right now is how much money do we really need to spend? I mean, if, if Senate Bill uh, 118 and AB 79 become law, which is possible in the very near future, that could save us a heck of a lot of money in the long run. Thank you, Alderman Redke. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes, I guess Jeff hit something, Alderman Radke hit something that I wanted to address. Um, shared services is talked about and, it, and it's, it's the buzzword. And, I'm not saying you're making this assumption, but I'll tell you that the people who have called me who have said, we want you to work with the county and have one dispatch system, or you know, look, thinking long term, we want you to have one, we can have the sheriff's department run everything. Well, be very clear, anytime I've ever talked to anybody on the county board, if they're gonna take the dispatching, they ain't just taking it and charging us what they, talk, what they charge the people in Adel. They're gonna say, okay, we're gonna take all your people, we're gonna, you know, you're gonna get charged an extra fee. Yeah, you pay for it now, but we're gonna charge you more. So it's not like they're just taking this whole department away from you and you're just gonna let the other outlying towns, villages, and communities absorb the cost. Granted, we're paying for dispatch for the county that does little or none, nothing for us now, other than some shared services. And they, that's what they think. They think, well, we're paying for it for the county, so we'll get it for free. And the same thing on police protection, I guarantee you the county's never gonna do that. I mean, they might do it, but they're just gonna say, sure, your budget's 64 million, we'll do it for 65. It's not like they're just gonna say, yeah, you're paying your fair share already, we'll spread that out. I think that that, that brings up my, my thoughts on the 23rd Street site. The only reason it's in there is because of shared services. And, and I don't wanna turn my back on that, but I think the county needs to make a commitment. You know, In my mind, give them 30 days, if they don't tell us that they're building something next to there, they're moving the highway department out, I'm not saying they gotta do it in 30 days, but they can decide in 30 days, they can make that commitment to us. Otherwise, get that site out of there, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the potential of shared services. Well, we're telling them we're thinking about building it there. Let's let them tell us that they're thinking about moving the highway department out, because I've talked to county board supervisors who have told me there's no reason the highway department should be there, and let's get it out, and they've gone nowhere. We've not only got to get the highway department out, then we've got to get the police people in, sheriff's department in. If they're not willing to commit to those two things, there's no sense in my mind even considering 23rd Street. 
Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, in regards to Senate Bill 118, um, there are a lot of unknowns uh, relating to that. But a lot of times people in municipalities will complain about unfunded mandates, such as right now the mandate is, is that any village over 5,000 people must have their own police force. What Senate Bill 118 is doing is they're dissolving that mandate, basically giving you a new option, um, authorizing a city or a village to abolish its police department and contract for law enforcement services with a county. I mean, I'm not saying that's the best thing that we uh, should jump on the bandwagon and move ahead with it. But there are a few unknown factors, such as are they going to start um, doling out shared revenue based on shared services? So should we you know, build a police station tomorrow? No, I don't think tomorrow, but you know, within the next year or two, possibly. But we have to keep our eyes on Madison to see what type of guidance and direction we're going to be getting from them. Because the last thing we want to do is stick $17 million into a police station and then find out from Madison that because we didn't incorporate shared services, now our shared revenue is going to be scaled back. I mean, can you imagine what that's going to do to the local taxpayers? Um, secondly, I do want to uh, make it clear that I was not in support. I was the only dissenting vote at finance tonight. Uh, we upped the cap. It was at $8.7 million. We doubled it to $17 million tonight. And I am not comfortable with that. I strongly believe we could use different types of building material uh, to bring that price down. And I question if 80,000 square feet is really necessary. Um, but aside from that, um, there's been some discussion and questions about if a city hall is large enough. And I guess one of the potential expansion ideas I see if we were to um, add on to City Hall is that you could almost create a law enforcement campus in the downtown area. Uh, perhaps the first phase would be to add on behind City Hall. The second phase would be um, you know, to check into the transfer point. Nobody has all the answers. We don't know if we have to repay any federal dollars. Maybe we don't have to repay any of that money and the land would be free to expand <coughs> across the street. You know, we, we could look into putting a parking structure across the street as well to help facilitate some of the parking issues that we have down here. You know, the Grand Hotel is on here. Now, granted, right now the acquisition price is too high and we can't afford it, but perhaps the county would decide down the line that they would like to purchase that property to expand the law enforcement campus uh, in the downtown area. So uh, we're in a situation where we have a lot of great options, and I think that we should... Um, look into all of them thoroughly and keep an open mind that even whatever we decide and you know, set our minds to tonight, that after we get the community input and input from other sources, that the ultimate decision might change from what we look at tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with Alderman Stefan that we need a commitment of shared services. That, that's just necessary. And um, building behind City Hall is too expensive. I don't think this council will ever do it. Because last I heard, a parking structure would be about two and a half million to build a parking structure down here. Any parking you take from businesses, you're gonna have to replace. So you're gonna have to spend money somewhere to, to replace parking. And a multi-floor structure is gonna be too expensive. You're, gonna, you're looking at like a six-story building behind here. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Dan Berg. <clears throat> like Alderman Stephan said, that 23rd Street site started off, they were going to be next door to us, our good neighbors. I'm on the county board. We talked to the law committee. We asked, how come the sheriff hasn't come out and made any statements? The sheriff made a statement once. He said, oh, sure, if it was built next door to us, it would be fine. They have no intention of building on the 23rd Street site. If that highway building is moved, it's going west. If they ever have a new sheriff's department, that's going west because the sheriff's department right now is in the worst possible place it could be, the farthest east in the county it could be. But as far as shared, revenue, shared services and everything, it's not going to happen because they even came in with having a metropolitan police department. A couple of supervisors came in and that went nowhere. They, the county, county boys didn't want nothing to do with that. But as far as shared services between the city and the county law enforcement agencies, there are 24 of them right now. I don't know how many more that you can have. Um, Alderman Berg, I did want to ask you, 
that year and a half to two year negotiation with the county, you were on that building use committee, it, it was considered very vi viable for a year and a half to two years. That was because the Sheridan Park site was not available at the time because they were going through the history of it all and to find out if it was legal and whatever. So the League of Min Municipalities declared it was legal to use Sheridan Park as the site for the police station. That is why that came up. Sure, that was second choice, but our first choice was still Sheridan Park. And that was because, and it, it wasn't uh, until the League of Municipalities said it, we could use it. That's why it didn't come out right away. Otherwise, it would have been used. Sheridan Park? No, no, 23rd Street. No, we don't know, because of all the money involved. I see. Thank you all. We're trying, to, we're trying to save money here. We, we can't keep uh, shaking our fists at, or nose at a million dollars here and there. Thank you, Alderman Danberg. Alderman Graff. Um, one thing I want to say, well, Sheridan Park isn't available now either, right. so um, 23rd Street probably is your, your first choice now. But other than that, uh, John, I have a question for you. <clears throat> How many sites can... If, if we can't give you more than, than the three sites that we had proposed here, how many can you look at to tell us, yeah, this would be doable there or not? More than three, is that four or 40? Well, no, I would guess it could be as many as five or six. Uh, um, it, it's something that our landscape architect and our designer would be working on, so um, uh, up to six is a doable proposition. 30 days is a little tight, but um, we have the musculature of office that can handle that kind of workload. So if you uh, put that task on us, we would, uh, we would make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Savanagh. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, South Business Drive and Broadway, two more questions. Related to that 1.5 acre site that would be needed to make the site viable. Would you have an estimated market value of that property? In addition, would you have an idea as to the tax revenue that we would lose by so buying that property? Don't have a clue what that's worth. I mean, I, have to, I don't know if, if Marie to have that or I have to go through the state to get that. Uh, I'm sure it's over a million bucks, the electronics and everything would be in there, probably well over that. Mm. I'm guessing. I think, thank you. <laughs> well, and then what we'd also have to add to that is relocation, demolition, and then also some kind of, like we did with all the other sites, um, take a look at moving expenses for that business. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I realize there is a motion currently on the floor, but I think it was a very good idea um, Alderman Stefan had bring to our attention, and that is we are looking at building a facility and always taking into consideration expansion based on shared services. And I think it's at this time that we do need to have a formal commitment from the county. And then I would also add to that and say, if the 23rd site is even considered after their commitment, that they'd be willing to put in writing that if there is any contamination at that site, it would be at their expense and not at the city's. Um, and I think it would give us some time to get this book. If we narrow it down to six sites, give it to Mr. Sabanash for his office and their expertise to look and see if this is feasible based upon the relationship they have built together with the, the police department in assessing our needs so we can have an accurate picture of what we're actually creating instead of us as older persons trying to figure this all out tonight. Thank you, Thank you Alderman Serda. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had spoken with the DNR a while back about ground sites and um, they did tell me that they would like cities to clean up the brown sites and they do have grants available for that. So I'm sure if we look into it, I don't think <coughs> it will cost us any money. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Graff. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, regarding the, the county site, uh, I know I've spoken several times with the, um, the administrative coordinator and um, uh, he with the, um, the county board chairperson, and uh, they both are in agreement that they would be more than willing to come over here and sit down with us and not negotiate because we wouldn't be that far yet, but tell us exactly what they think they could do for us and what we expect from them we could so transfer to them. 
but that again has to be at a different step in time. But I think now that we know that um, they can handle up to six, if somebody wants to amend my motion to add three more, I think we, that's what we need to do, too. Alderman Dan Berg. Okay, he, he had the top three, City Hall, 23rd, and the bus to no, the drop-off site. Oh, the drop-off site, I'm sorry. Okay, that, I have that too. I would, like, I would like to add North 13th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue site between uh, Commerce Street and North 13th Street and at Southwest Business Drive. I'm, on which Bro one? I'm sorry. Uh, North 13th and Pennsylvania okay, Avenue. That's it says number two on, uh, in the column okay, there. Yeah. All right. And then uh, number 18. Okay. So that's, that's five. That right? would be five right there. That's five. All right. And if anybody else would like to add another one, I'd. Uh, is there. Alvin Graff, would you say those again? Um, number. Um, City Hall. Oh, it, it would be. If, was there a second to your amendment? Second. Okay. Then it would be the five that have been suggested so far, um, City Hall, 23rd Street, Southwest Business slash Broadway, former drop-off site, and then no. Northeast 13th slash Pennsylvania Avenue. Thank you. Now, that's an amendment to the original motion, so. Yes, and there was a second on it. Thank you. Yes. We need a vote on the amendment. Right. Yes. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 14 to 1. I have different ideas. Okay. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Is this where I would like to make an amendment, just so the ball doesn't drop, that we get a, a formal commitment from the county, as oh, far as? Okay. Well, you can make that as a separate motion. Sure. Okay. Right. Rather than site selection. Rather than um, oh, mess sure. it up with this. Sounds good. I'll do that. If then. that's okay. okay. Um, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Is there anybody that would like to add any of the other sites to make it six, or is the five, Alderman? Um, now, if I may, Alderman yes. Susha. Yes, Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, I would just like to add um, the bus transfer station as an option, and for a couple of reasons. I think you could almost get two birds with one stone here because I've talked to some people who have been taking the bus, and they've painted some interesting pictures in my mind in regards to imagine if the bus was your only mode of transportation and you were sick and you needed to go to the doctor. In Sheboygan, you have to go all the way downtown, transfer buses, switch to get to the clinic. And um, it takes them a good half hour to get to see a doctor when they're feeling very ill. Also with um, grocery shopping, the downtown area is not very good for people who take the bus. When you go, you do your grocery shopping and you have all these bags full of frozen goods, it's going to take you a good 30 minutes to get home. So what I'd like to do is at least look at that option um, and check into moving or the feasibility of moving the transfer station. Um, and that way, if the city hall uh, package deal could move forward, that would give um, the architect a little more room uh, to look at this option, they almost could be bundled together. So I'd like to amend Alderman Groff's resolution to include that. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Vanderweel. Uh, is there a second? Second. Yes, second. All in oh. favor of the amendment, aye. No, just, just, oh, okay. have to ask for discussion. Oh, discussion, thank you, Alderman Groff, thank you. Any discussion on the amendment to add the bus transfer station to the list? If not, all in favor of Alderman Serda, you have a comment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, also I would um, ask that when we're receiving this information, I think it's, it's a good idea, but just to involve um, Mr. McDonald in that, seeing that he's ahead of transit. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Also under the discussion, if I may. Yes, Alderman Groff. Thank you. Um, Ron, as long as you're here, um, do you have any idea of what we may be would have to pay back to the feds, or is there something that we could do to to work something out, say if we did a new transfer station? 
Well, <clears throat> good question. They're going to want 80% of the fair market value of the property. And can we work out a deal? Perhaps if we use that 80% towards the purchase of a new facility, but my guess is it's going to cost you a lot more to replace what you have than what you're going to get out of it. So you're, you're probably adding, I would expect, a few million dollars on top of what you're going to get out of that that you're going to have to pay for a new transfer facility. Um, then we have to, to get additional federal money to work through this process. We have to get that into the TIP. Um, next, trip, next TIP will be coming through in 2006. We can probably get that into a grant about 2009, maybe 2010, where we get the grant money at about 2011, begin construction about 2012. That's the reality of it. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Vanderweel, yes, you're on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I agree with Alderman Susha's theory and concept. I think it's a good theory. But my concern is the time of looking at these six sites and the cost. Is it 50000 for each site he looks at? And what are we looking at for cost? And how long will it take? Thank you, Alderman, Alderman Vanderweel. Mr. Sabanash. <laughs> Well, I, I would like some time to be able to go and consider what my task is. It will not be an order of magnitude of $50,000 a site. And the mantle, as I understand it, is we have to be done in 30 days. So uh, within that framework, I would tend to say I need to have a draft document done in about three weeks. And I can't spend that amount of money per site in the office equitably and still approach you without looking you, looking away from you every time I look you in the eye. So, uh, we'll put together a proposal that fulfills your timeline and does so in a reasonable and responsible way. Thank you, Mr. Sabana. Thank you. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to clarify for myself, as far as the bus transfer station being presented as another optional site, I think that's a good idea that we're just generating more information. I don't necessarily think it could be possibly feasible given the commitment that we have to the federal government. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Sure, sir, I think. Alderman Susha. Thank you. I know that oftentimes we put um, department heads on uh, short notice to come up to the microphone and answer questions, but I would encourage everybody that if you don't have the answer, it's okay to say, I don't know because I was not prepared to answer this question tonight. And I, I appreciate the fact that Mr. McDonald stepped up to the microphone and, and did the best he could, but when I hear I believe and I think and those types of phrases, I just think it's worthy. It's better to say, I don't know, I'd have to check into it, rather than take a stab in the dark, because things could have changed since the last time it was addressed. And, and um, I'd rather have the truth, even if it takes 24 hours to get it. I'd rather like to have things written down, rather than everybody guessing, because you do hear that a lot. And he's not alone. A lot of us, you know, I think, I predict. You know, I'd rather have the facts, rather than guessing all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Danberg. Oh, I didn't know nope. That. All right. <laughs> yeah, Alderman Graff. Madam Chair, then at this particular time, I'd like to bring forth the motion then that um, the six sites that we should include would be um, City Hall, North 23rd Street, uh, the bus transfer station, Southwest Business. Oh, I, I thought. That's right. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we have to vote on that bus one. That's any, right. <laughs> any more discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment to add the bus transfer station site to the list for Mr. Sabanash and company to look at? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Two opposed? I'll roll call. call. And I vote would be to include the bus transfer site. D, D Berg? No. Eberg? No. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Myself will be aye. Kettleson? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemero? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Van Akron? No. Van der Wheeling? Aye. 
Nine eyes, six noes, carries. Amendment carries. Amendment passes. Your vote total was 12. Nine to six. Fifteen. Fifteen. Alderman Bauman is excused this evening. There's 15 of them. And then with that, Madam Chairman, I would ask that um, we um, put forth a motion that City Hall, 23rd Street, um, bus transfer station, Southwest Business slash Broadway, former drop-off site, and the Northeast 13th slash Pennsylvania Avenue be the six sites that we have picked. Second. Any further discussion? Who seconded that? Oh, okay. Let us vote. Let's do a roll call on that, just to make it clean. OK, just a minute then. OK, this is on the six sites, and I vote would be in favor of those six. Eberg. Aye. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Myself is I. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, aye. Radke, aye. Segali, aye. Stefan, aye. Susha, aye. Van Akron, Vanderweele, Deberg. Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Mr. Sabanash, you have your work cut out for you. No. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> now I would like to make a motion that we get a formal commitment from the county, what, um, a commitment from them if they are going to actually build with, thank you, <laughs> build with the city of Sheboygan and um, co-locate in the future, some type of commitment. And also I would add that I understand Alderman Meyer, Meyer's input, but there are no guarantees. And people still have fresh in their men memory um, close to that proximity, the, the pond, the retention pond that we had purchased and the mess that we had and the cleanup costs that we had there. And I say, you know, put it in writing. That way we're all at ease and that way the city is safeguarded. And if it's their property and they can stand by that, that's even, that's even better. Thank you. Thank you. But the last portion of this was regarding contamination or not? contamination and that they should put it in writing that if there is any contamination found at that site, they would be liable for the cleanup costs. Okay. Alderman Serda. Alderman Susha. Are you the second? Grandma? Are you the second? Radke. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Yes, Alderman Susha. Okay, I think that's a, a great idea to get the, the county involved. And I'm just looking at the four-step process and. I would almost think that that would have to fall into place next before the architect reviews the sites because we would almost have to know what that need is beforehand. No. Okay. Madam Chair, I don't think we can do that. I, otherwise, we'd lose track of the time frame that we're on. So it's going to have to be something that's going to be ongoing. Um, once this is, is drawn up, it will be presented to um, the county board as a, um, as a motion, and at that time, they'll. Um, if they have two weeks or whatever it's going to be to, to put something to, to make this commitment, um, that's what they'll have to have. Um, that's my thoughts. Uh, I don't know. And my thoughts would be uh, a lot of these sites, if, if we don't know how they're going to work out, um, the South Business and Broadway, would we have to get a commitment that they would sell before we went ahead? I think we need to get the information from Mr. Sabanash's company. Zimmerman Company, Mr. Sabanash. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Eldon Burke. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. A couple of thoughts. Uh, we talk about commitment uh, when it comes to negotiating with our colleagues in the county, and I would submit we don't need commitment. We need a prenuptial uh, to uh, uh, perhaps address the issue. Factors that I think play into this is, uh, one, uh, a decision by the county's legislative body this year does not bind a future legislative body to it. So in other words, while I think it's a good idea to get current intent, as time goes on 10 years from now, that intent may be changed, if you would, by subsequent administrations. Uh, and I don't know that at this stage of the game, we can legitimately expect to have a contract. So in terms of the concept of getting intent, I think that is certainly a, a reasonable idea. If there is a mechanism that exists, I think it comes as 
if 23rd Street becomes the site and a viable site, I think we can engage in certain contractual negotiations that would hopefully bind future county boards to make it attractive, if you would, to co-locate with us on 23rd Street site. But I think that's something we've done before in terms of some of our other, our other negotiations and hopefully uh, one that will come out of some deliberation and contract language. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Stephan. I don't disagree with everything Alden said. I do think what we'll know in a hurry is how interested this board is. And I, I sense they're not very interested because I've never seen any action on their part. You know, in common sense would dictate that, you know, they don't want to be at 23rd Street. They want to be out, you know, somewhere near Falls, Plymouth, that area. That's the center of the county. So it won't guarantee us that they'll be there, but I think it'll give us a very good impression that they won't be if they're not interested. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. <coughs> Alderman Radke. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I would like to see in the next committee, the whole meeting of 23rd Street does place up there that we invite the sheriff and his people and the county law committee people up here in the proper people so we can ask the questions, get them right here instead of saying, well, I wonder if, you know, we'll just ask them right here from the podium so we can get some direct straight answers and see exactly which way they, they intend to go. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Alderman Dan Burr. I will do you one better, Jeff, or Alderman Person Ratke. I'll go tomorrow, and I will talk to Sheriff Helmke and see what his thoughts are on this whole idea. Thank you, Alderman Burr. Alderman Serda. I think all these extensions are really good, but I still believe that we need it in writing, folks, and we need to go through the formal process. So I think the motion should still stand, but still go ahead and do what's recommended. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think the first part of the motion is um, um, unadvisable to pursue that kind of commitment for them. They can't truly provide it. Uh, but I believe the second part is what we could pursue. So I'm going to vote to uh, a no on this motion. We could have a second motion asking about the cleanup costs that would be their responsibility. Thank you, Alderman Manning. Any further discussion? Yes, Alderman Brock. Thank you. What I have written down, and I, I might need something more from you tomorrow morning, but right now I've got, we need a, a written commitment from the county that they are willing to work with us on, on the 23rd Street site and to possibly build there in the future. Co-locate with us. Or co-locate, you want it? And not possibly just co-locate. Okay. And um, okay, and then put in writing that contamination would be paid for by the county. Mm -hmm. And to and to put in writing that contamination would be paid for by the county. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clean up. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just thinking maybe it would be proper for Alderman Serta to submit a document to council. She can think about what she wants to put in there because this is spur of the moment. And we are sending it to uh, other governing bodies, so maybe that would be more proper. And maybe that she could work with Steve on it also. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Would you like to withdraw this motion then? <laughs> this is a committee, not a not the council. Alderman Serda. Chairman, I guess I need to you need to let me know and the public know how does this affect our time frame. As far as, because if I submit it to council and work on the resolution, how long will that take? And maybe we have Steve here tonight, if he would like to inject anything, maybe we can just change it tonight and get it going and go forward. I think, or if I may, I believe Steve could have something, um, or you two could work something out so that it could be presented to our next council meeting, which is next week, Monday. Okay. And at that time, we could vote on that to refer it to the, the, um, to the county board for their action. And so I don't think it would delay anything okay. as far as that goes. Okay, good. So, I yeah, hate to uh, commit all these people to all this, but um, I'm sure they would be more than willing to do that. <laughs> so Alderman Serda, you're withdrawing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the second also? Alderman Radke? No. Thank you. I think that's it. Uh, Alderman Eldenburg. Uh, given that there's no motion, I have a question on uh, uh, the step in the process. I think in the past, uh, 
Uh, most of the design uh, uh, firms have looked out only 20 years. I think for me, one of the considerations of looking, for example, at City Hall, I can see City Hall perhaps being functional in 20 years. Uh, this building has been here 100 years, okay? <laughs> we do a police station once every 100 years, and I guess I would uh, ask if uh, uh, Mr. Sabanash would feel it would be within his uh, professional judgment to take it out 40 or 60 years in terms of the, uh, venturing a guess in terms of the potential uh, that these various sites might have for future expansion beyond the 20 year, if you would envelope that uh, you feel comfortable operating within. I know I can design a building that will last 100 years. I can't attest to the program changes that will uh, evolve within the department. I, I would uh, use as one example, if you, you probably pulled every police chief in the uh, state of Wisconsin in 1950 and said, what do, you, what do you think women, what role will women play in the department? They would have all missed. A and so um, a as a functional programmatic effort, I know that I'll be very, it would be very difficult for me to programmatically identify that. In terms of construction, I know I can build a building that will last within the time frame that you've identified within um, reasonable construction costs. Would you say, however, that, for example, using city hall platform, that there would be certain challenges when you go out 40 or 60 years that other sites may not present? Um, uh, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll say how most people deal with expansion. Uh, in a project of this type, as even we've begun to discuss in my two minutes to talk to the chief, um, independent of the finance committee is that if the program changes, if for some reason the program has to be reduced, the things that you take out are the future expansion. It's the office that wasn't assigned. It's the conference room that now becomes an office. And we've all seen, I think, if you looked at the original plans for this building, that storage spaces, conference rooms, things that were public meeting spaces now have now evolved into functional operational office spaces and things of that ilk. So in, in terms of how the program evolves relative to the budget, I know that there's growth and we use 20 years as a, as a measuring stick because that seems to be what's in vogue these days for architects to use. Um, the more program that's cut, the less likely it is that the building is gonna satisfy your needs. Now, is that threshold of pain gonna happen in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, or 40 years? That's what's tough to identify because we don't know how the department's gonna change. One of the things that tends to happen now in criticism of buildings that if you look at libraries, there's certainly a population base that thinks that all you need is an internet connection at your home and that's the new library. Police departments could evolve into something similar to that. Uh, it, it's certainly not outside the realm that if the city of Sheboygan were to grow substantially for any number of different reasons, that you might look at a different methodology of policing. You might start to look at independent stations, satellite stations, and things of that nature. So. I can stand here and probably tell you something that I think could happen in 20 years. I know that the program that we have in place will create a building that will last that time frame. I know the technology will change in it. I know that we'll have enough space to satisfy the department needs in that time. Outside of that, it becomes very difficult for, I think, anyone to extrapolate what the nature of the department's going to be. I know that reducing the square footage will limit your opportunities in the future. Um, but that may be uh, a hurdle that we just have to cross when we get to the budget process. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Sabanash. Paulette. I guess I have a question for Mr. Sabanash, too. If you, when you design a building and can, given the restrictions that we have in Sheboygan based on site, mm -hmm. and we don't have any greenfield sites and we're working on primarily urban sites, do mm -hmm. you think about going up as an alternative so that the building is constructed if and when you had to expand that you could potentially just add a story or two? It would be my preference that if we need to deal with expansion on any site that we deal with it as an addition to the building rather than going on top of the building. In general, in general terms, it's very difficult for a construction agency to keep the police department operational when we're building on top of it. When there's no roof on the building, it's very difficult to ensure that the weather tightness and the validity of the people that are working in that environment below where the weather actually exists are going to actually function adequately. So, and I know that that's also one of those things that's in vogue is architects say, well, we'll just add a floor, you'll build up. In police department planning, that's very difficult to actually achieve. And so that's still a real opportunity, and I would never dismiss it. A certain site may dictate it, 
but if I had my option, I would rather say let's leave a section of the site available for expansion. That expansion would take place horizontally. And that would ensure that the people who are operating in the building in the future still can operate there. And at a certain point, the two blend together and that transition takes place. But again, it's really difficult to shut down a 24-hour building to allow somebody to build on top of it. Thank you, Mr. Savanish. Alderman Serda. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This question is for Paulette and Tom. Considering that we um, are still going to be possibly looking at South Business Drive, is there any way Alderman Manning had suggestion the acquisition costs and the actual charter cable? If we could get that information back, I don't know if we directed them to actually do that. If you could provide us with that information concrete instead of the ifs and maybes. <laughs> Thank you. Do that. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Yes, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, all, we passed out um, the process for selecting a location for the new police station, and um, I just went through and I changed wherever it says three to six, and um, with that, I'd, um, I'd make a motion that we approve that process for selecting the location of the new police station. Second. Wait a second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the process for le selecting location for the new police station. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I just had a question. Um, you're amending this document? The yeah, process? I, just, I just changed where it says oh. three to six. I was just wondering if there's no number on the document. I was just wondering how you would do that because there doesn't seem to be a formal document. But just be, because this is a process we're going to adopt as, as a committee of the whole. Okay. If, and that's why it's not a document per se that's going to counsel anything. It's a committee of the whole document. And that's uh, what's going to guide us through this process, I believe. I believe you're right. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Thank you. Alderman Serda. So you're saying step three is changing to step six? No, no, no. Okay. Any place it says pick three potential sites, I'd change it to pick six. Okay. Because that's what we did. Um, one of the things like an older person I know said here on the floor is that there is a component with the county missing in here. So are we restricting ourselves by passing this that any other, any other information like tonight, we are sending, we're doing another component here. We're sending the information to Mr. Sabinash. That wasn't on here. I'm just a little concerned that we might restrict ourselves in the future unless you want to put in a clause there if, you know, we can, if we have to amend this document or how that process would work. Because, like I said, there's a couple steps that we initiated tonight that wouldn't have fallen under these categories. Uh, step two is refer them to Zimmerman for further evaluation. Okay. But the county and how the county is oh, going to affect Yeah, that's this? separate from this process. Right. This particular well, sheet of your paper. Your document will do that, and we've talked about it, so it should be covered under here. Okay. That's, that's input from whoever we need input from. Okay. That Thank would be you. my interpretation. Right? As long as we don't restrict ourselves, that's fine. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Any further discussion on accepting this process step? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Thank you. We'll find, we'll find out, the mayor can find out from the library if they will let us meet there and when. And that'll be within the time frame that um, Zimmerman is gathering information. And then step four, we will review Zimmerman's evaluation of the three sites of the six sites and the public's input and vote on a site. In your next meeting. Alderman Berg. Prior to making the motion to adjourn, uh, do you anticipate a, a future meeting of this body? I would bet there would be, yes. Do you have a date? Well, I was thinking of waiting until Mr. Sabanash or Zimmerman lets us know when they have the information. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Just a minute. Can we tentatively set that up? July um, 11th. We haven't voted on this yet. Oh, July 11th. Oh. Okay. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> Who made the second? 